If you are someone who is new to working out or has even been working out for a few months to a year or more and still have absolutely no idea what to do in the gym, you've been seeing minimal progress with your strength and your hypertrophy gains, and you just literally go in every day and you're like, hmm, I'm just gonna wing it and do something random, then this video is exactly made for you. I work with beginners all the time who are coming into the gym for the first time or who are just trying to actually become consistent in the gym and have no idea where to start. So hiring a coach is sometimes a really great place to learn things, get the tools that you need to create your own workout plan eventually down the line, and to just kind of start off with someone helping you have that motivation, accountability, and discipline. I recognize that it could be really confusing when it comes to workouts and learning what to do on your own and how to make your own workout program. So essentially, that's what we're going to talk about today, how to create the perfect beginner program that will help you see strength gains, help you see muscle gains, and that you could use over and over again and just slowly progress to help you make progress in the gym up to maybe even the next year. So if you were thinking, I have no idea what the fuck to do when I walk into the gym then keep listening, and I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know. If you guys enjoy this video or you like the content I've been putting out, please like, comment, and subscribe as always. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to create the perfect beginner workout. Everything that you need to know and then some. I would do the wink, but I, I simply cannot. Okay, so I think one of the best places to start, and I do this oftentimes with my clients when they first come in, we really need to focus on how many times per week they should be coming in to see me that is realistic, will meet their goals and will not overwhelm them. So the first thing that we do is kind of chat about that and set a realistic goal. I think it's really important to kind of meet yourself where you're at. And this means that if you are right now working out zero times per week and have been doing that consistently for a few weeks, a few months, or even a few years, then you need to start out lower than you might even think. One to two days is much better than going zero days per week. And you're only going to overwhelm yourself if you start much, much higher than that. I would say in that four to six or seven day range. And you're probably going to stunt your progress before you really even begin. So I don't know if this is something you could relate to, but I know most people that I have worked with have said that they have set the goal of going five days per week. They're going to turn a new leave and they're going to go gung ho in the gym. And then they end up doing that for about four days. They usually don't even make it through the first week. And then the next week it goes back down to zero times because they simply overwhelm themselves. They overstress their body. They're super sore and all their motivation has gone completely down the toilet. So I think the best thing to nail is how many days per week can you go realistically? If that is one and that's all the motivation you have, then start there. I would say optimally three to four times per week, especially for a beginner is amazing, but you have to once again, meet yourself where you're at, regardless if it's two days, three days, four days, five days, whatever it is and so on, just make sure that is something that you could realistically handle and that you have been doing consistently already. Once you have mastered the set amount of days that you have initially set for yourself. So that set goal of saying going three times per week after doing that for about four to eight weeks and being super consistent with it, and you're ready to bump up to that fourth day and you want to take on a little more of a workload, then do that. But first you need to hit that goal for at least four to eight weeks. Or I promise when you add that extra day on, it's going to feel overwhelming. And that might even take you back down to going zero to one time per week. The point of this here is you need to be realistic, meet yourself where you're at, and you need to take it one step at a time. There's no need to rush here. You're only in competition with yourself. And I truly mean that. So once you kind of figure out how many days per week you are actually able to go and that you will stick to, to, the next best thing that you're going to want to figure out for your workout program is what workout split is best for me. So workout split, I'm sure you've probably seen that term before, either on the internet or on social media, whatever it may be, but it's really just a term to describe what muscle groups you are targeting on specific days or during specific workouts. So you might've heard of the upper lower split, a full body split, an isolated muscle group split, like chest and tries, back and buys, which there is nothing wrong with that split. But as a beginner or someone who might not be going six to seven days per week, 
It's probably going to be most optimal to hit something that is not considered the bro split where you're isolating different muscle groups by like back and biceps or shoulders and chest every day of the week. So it's important to figure out how many days you want to go first so that we could then look and see what would be most optimal because we want to hit each muscle group at least, I mean, at least one time per week, but the most optimal would be two to three times per week. So if you are someone who is going one to even three days per week, it's probably going to be best to hit full body every single day. Meaning you are touching on all the major muscle groups like your back, your legs, and that gets even a little more nuanced because there's quads, there's hamstrings, there's calves, you're hitting different parts of the muscle group. But for the majority of it, you're gonna be wanting to focus on hitting each muscle group each day of the week that you go to the gym. If you are someone who is planning to hit the gym four to six days per week, I would definitely recommend either a full body, which you can totally do, but that might become really fatiguing, or I prefer the upper lower split, which means that maybe two to three days out of the week, you're hitting upper body and or two to three days out of the week, you're hitting lower body. So you're making sure that you're hitting each muscle group two to three times per week, but you're giving your lower body at least one to two days of rest in between and the same thing for your upper body. So it'd be upper body, maybe push, or you could do push and pull where you're kind of bringing together both those like, say like an incline bench press where you're pushing the weight away from you and a bent over row, or you can kind of separate those onto different days. So it could be an upper body push and an upper body pull. It really doesn't matter too much. Just the point is that you are giving your lower body a break as you do your upper body, then maybe a day or two later, you're hitting your lower body, then maybe a day or two later, going back to the upper body and so on and so forth. So this is a really easy way to set up your workouts. It's not super hard to think about because you're literally just picking exercises that one hit your upper body on a certain day and then two hit your lower body on a certain day. And then if you want and say you don't want to hit your upper body more than twice per week and same goes for your lower body, you could always throw in an extra day of simply like recovery. And I always suggest the steady state cardio because that could be really great one for just like your cardiovascular health your overall endurance. And then on top of that, making sure that you are not interrupting your strength and hypertrophy gains as you are in the gym. So sometimes doing too high of intensity for your cardio can kind of disrupt what you're doing in the gym for maybe the next day with your lifts. So it really just depends on what you're prioritizing. And I always recommend more like a zone two type of workout where maybe you're on the treadmill at an incline or you're on the bike and you're going at a pace that is conversational, but it's hard to talk. Like you could have a conversation, but you really don't want to. And this carries over a lot of benefits, like I said, for your cardiovascular health, your endurance, your overall fitness, and it helps to minimize the amount of disruption that occurs to your lifts that you might be doing the next day. So, so far we've kind of discovered that you need to one pick how many days you are going to be going to the gym to start with. After that, you could take a closer look at your workout split and then pick the split that would work best for you or seems most interesting. And again, you guys could always change this. After doing four to eight weeks of a program that you've created for yourself, you could always change it up. That's the beauty of working out. You have different goals and they change over time and you could always create your program to better fit your goals and just your motivation. So don't feel stuck in a certain pattern or remember you can change it up. These are just general recommendations for it to help you really create the best, most optimal program for yourself at this point in your journey. Okay. So now the question becomes what actually goes into my workouts each day that I do them or my program as a whole. I would 100% recommend not having your workouts go over 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. As a beginner, or just a person in general, if you love training, sure, and you have worked your way up to eventually doing maybe that two, two and a half hour workout, fine. But that's not going to be sustainable for many people, especially a beginner who is not well-trained. Keeping it in that 45 minute to 75 minute range, including your warm up and your cool down will help your body recover better. It's probably gonna keep you more motivated because you won't be so sore. You won't feel like going to the gym is a task or a chore and you will be able to make so much progress in the gym because you're not overtaxing yourself and you're allowing your body to recover. That 45 to 75 minute bracket basically allows you to, in my experience, hit five to about eight exercises with an optimal say like two to four minute break in between each set to allow your body 
body to recover and perform the best it can on the next set that you do. How many sets you're gonna wanna do of each of those exercises is probably going to be between two to four. So a lot of times when my new clients come into me that have not worked out in say like a few months or a year and their training tolerance is way, way low, what we're actually gonna do is probably start most of their exercises off with about three sets some even being two that I know are gonna be really taxing or challenging for them. And then as the weeks go on, we might add in more sets to that. So I will not pass four sets for a beginner because you really don't need to. Beginners are in such an amazing place where they have so much potential to reach and they're really here. You guys are at the bottom and I know that sounds really shitty, but I promise it's amazing. People who are advanced are really close to reaching kind of their ceiling when it comes to training. There's always more above that ceiling, but it gets harder and harder to reach really your max potential as you become an intermediate and an advancee. There's not a lot of space between you and the bar. When you're a newbie and you're just starting out, there's so much space for you to grow and there's so much potential that it really occurs much faster than someone who has advanced and basically at the top. So as a beginner, you really do not need more than four sets to see optimal strength and muscle growth. And you should bank on that. Make sure that each set you're giving your best effort and it's gonna feel amazing. You're probably gonna be recovering pretty well, all those awesome things. So why push yourself to do five or six sets when it's really not necessary at this point in your journey? And I would even suggest that if you have not worked out for years or ever consistently, start everything out at two sets. It's okay if your workout only takes 45 minutes. In the coming weeks, as that becomes a lot easier feeling, then you could start to bump up from there. And that feeling that I'm kind of talking about is referring back to RPE, which is your rate of perceived exertion. So in the beginning, when you're a beginner and you're first starting your workout program, which probably ranges between like four to eight weeks, what you're gonna do is probably start closer to an RPE of six. So if you could think of the RPE scale between one and 10, you're gonna feel like you're giving about 60% on each of these exercises. As the weeks go on, you and you start to become more comfortable with form, with the way weight feels, you're becoming more intentional with each exercise and set that you do, and you feel so confident in the way that you're doing it, you could get a little bit closer to seven, eight, nine, maybe even pushing yourself till failure when you get closer to the tail end of your program and you're really going hard in the gym, you're accumulating a decent amount of fatigue, but you're still recovering well. And that's when you're really gonna see a lot of progress in the gym. However, for the untrained person, even being at an RPE of like six to seven is gonna yield a lot of progress in the beginning. I myself still use this method as I go through my program, starting at about an RPE of a seven and then working closer to like a nine or a 10 as my program advances towards the tail end of it because I usually set myself up with a nice little deload or I start my next program off back at an RPE seven and give my body a little rest so that I feel great as I step back into a new program. Okay, so there are also rep schemes that you need to worry about because you're not just gonna wanna kind of throw in an exercise and be like, meh, I'll just kind of see what happens. I think it's a really good idea in the beginning to give yourself a set number of reps and then pick the weight based on your set of reps. You could also incorporate RPE if you feel comfortable with this. And I am going to include a little freebie guide for you guys at the end so you can get a really good idea of how you would look at your sets, your reps, and your RPE, and really base your effort on all three of those things. So if you guys are interested, there's a link in the bottom. Get a little freebie four-week guide for yourself and kind of start off on the right foot with all the knowledge that you need to then go on and create your own program. Okay. So anyways, I, I typically use all of these rep ranges with my clients at different points in their program and for different exercises. So for that 10 to 20 rep scheme where you're doing a set of like 10 to 20, say goblet squats, I might start them out at about 10 to 15 reps just so that they really could learn the exercise. If I'm giving them only four to five reps to do an exercise, it's gonna be really hard for them to catch on to what they're even supposed to be doing in that short amount of time and to feel their muscles working. Sometimes I ask people at like rep number eight, I'm like, do you feel this in your legs? 
And they're just focused so much on what their body's even doing. They have no idea where they're feeling it. And it'll take a few more reps for them to really catch on to that. So I think it's really important in the beginning to give yourself a little more time or reps, say maybe 10 to 20 or in that eight to 10 rep range to learn what it is that you're even supposed to be doing. And then this is also a rep range that 10 to 20, where I usually throw in accessory work. So tricep extensions, bicep curls, people could usually create a very strong mind muscle connection when they're doing a little bit more reps. Another rep range that I really like to start my clients at is the eight to 10 rep range because you are going to one, be able to connect to your body here. You're gonna gain a ton of basic strength and it's also a very good place to gain muscle mass. So as you become more comfortable and as the weeks go on, maybe after like the second or third week of your program and you're doing the same workout again and it's like the third Wednesday or the third Monday or whatever of your program, you could start to maybe lower the reps a little bit and start to bump up the weight once you now have some neuromuscular control and you could connect to what you're doing bump that weight up, bring your reps down to eight to 10 and work from there. That is also in turn gonna probably bump up your RPE closer to like a seven or eight. And it's gonna feel much more hard than it was when you were using a lighter weight at maybe 15 reps a couple weeks before. So you're naturally kind of progressing your own self through your program. You're bumping up your RPE, making that rate of perceived exertion feel much higher. And then you're doing some justice for your own strength and your muscle gains, which is awesome. Typically, I will keep my clients in that rep range for most of their exercises, except for their accessory exercises. I do tend to keep those high still. And I'll do that for about maybe two to four weeks. And then we'll start to lower back down closer to that one to four rep range. So this is typically what I do with my clients the last like one to three weeks of their program where we're really testing their strength and capabilities here. Their RPE is gonna feel much higher. So it's probably gonna be closer to eight to nine. You're gonna be exerting a lot more force for a smaller amount of reps, yes, but your central nervous system is gonna feel a lot more fatigued because the weight is really bearing down on you. And again, you're taking your body through all these different rep ranges, working on your hypertrophy, working on your strength, working on your nervous system and kind of preparing it for super high weights. And typically I will use the one to four rep scheme with exercises like my squat, my bench and my deadlift or my client squat, bench and deadlift. So mostly those big compound lifts that I could use multiple muscle groups to kind of power through. You probably don't wanna be doing lateral raises or those accessory exercises at this small of a rep range because it's, it's honestly just weird. You really can't go that heavy and you're not gonna be able to connect too much to the muscle as you're doing it. So just keep that in mind that these are more for exercises where you're using multiple muscle groups. You're not gonna be taxing one joint specifically too much with those heavier loads. And then towards the tail end of your program or when you start a new program, you're probably gonna wanna bump back up maybe to that eight to 10 rep range. And as the weeks go on, work your way down through those reps, make sure you're hitting each one. And then you will ensure that you keep increasing your strength and your body's used to all of those different rep ranges in some way. A great way to also test your progress is that if you started at eight to 10 reps and you were doing say bent over rows, and you were only able to do 50 pounds, you work your way down maybe closer to like that six rep range. And then the next time you go back up to doing 10 reps, you're able to do 60 pounds. Then you know you have made some sort of strength gain, which is awesome. So going through those rep ranges and going back and seeing if you're able to do more the next time you do that set amount of reps is a really awesome way to test your own progress. Okay, so now that we've talked about how many exercises we should be doing in our workouts, how many sets and how many reps and what RPE is and how it could really guide you through your workouts. We also want to look at what exercises should be in your program initially to begin with. This really will not change too much as you advance or become an intermediate. The basic fundamental movement groups are the basic fundamental movement groups and we're all doing them all the time. One thing you're gonna to wanna to include in your program is a squat or knee dominant movement pattern. So your body squats, your goblet squats, front back squats with the barbell or Smith machine, it really doesn't matter, but focusing on that key pattern is going to help so much because it's teaching your body a really basic movement that you do every single day. It's teaching you how to perfect it. And then when you start to do maybe more nuanced movements or you move more towards machines or anything like that, it's gonna catch on so much easier. And even just other movements in general, I've learned that the more aware of my body I become from doing the basics, 
the more I could transfer that over and learn any exercise really just like that. So perfecting your squat pattern is really important. The same can be said for your hip hinge dominant movements. So say like your um, hip thrust where your chest is elevated, a bridge on the floor, a kettlebell deadlift, a barbell deadlift in any variation or form that you may want prefer to do. I do recommend trap bar for someone who's just beginning or using a kettlebell in the beginning to really get that movement down because a kettlebell is such a great way to reinforce your form and to kind of pick it back up again if you're feeling a little wonky. But those movements, once you pick up on them, really could be transferred to so many different other exercises. So make sure you have some sort of squat in there. Make sure you have some sort of hinge dominant movement that really focuses more on the flexion or the bend at your hips than at your knees. You're gonna want some sort of horizontal and vertical push. So a great example of a horizontal push would be your incline bench press or your flat bench press. Incline usually tends to be a little bit easier on the shoulders if you're someone with wonky shoulders, just an FYI. Another example would be like your push-ups. If you're gonna do a vertical push, it'll be like a standing or seated shoulder press or even like a barbell push press, something along those lines. The same could be said for your pull movements. So a horizontal or vertical pull, a really great example of the vertical pull would be like your pull up variations where you're moving up and down in that vertical plane. Another example, say of like a horizontal pull would be your bent over row or like a single arm bent over row. That also brings me to adding in single limb exercises to your program. I think it's really important and beneficial to work on doing single limb exercises like a single leg deadlift, a single leg hip thrust, a single arm bench press, or say a single arm bent over row, because then you could really isolate each side individually and you won't be using the other side to compensate. And then of course we have our accessory movements where you're doing maybe like a dumbbell, a cable bicep curl, you're doing an overhead tricep extension, your calf raises, your lateral raises or your front raises. It's really important to make sure that you're touching on each body part. Though you do hit some of those body parts with your compound lifts or your bigger lifts, Still, it could be nice to isolate them, especially if you have aesthetic goals and you wanna see your biceps or your arms, calves grow, whatever it may be. Again, I wanna emphasize, and this is super important, learn these basic fundamentals first before you start looking to do things like a hack squat or a leg press or using the machines and relying on them heavily. If you learn how to do a barbell back squat and you learn how to do it with such incredible form and stability, when you go to go onto your leg press or your hack squat, it is going to come just like that. And it's going to feel super easy. And you're going to be like, Ooh, did I do this before? No, you fucking didn't. But you've been doing that movement pattern and perfecting it for weeks and weeks or months now. So learning something new or when you step onto a new machine that does some of the work for you, especially when it comes to stabilization, it's going to come to you like cake and you're gonna be able to connect with it really, really well. Okay, last but not least, what should you even be focusing on as you're doing your workouts? One of the most important things for me is being super intentional with each exercise that I am doing. So I wanna make sure that I have an intention when I go into each rep, each set, and each workout. What muscle groups am I trying to hit? As I'm doing the exercise, do I feel them working? And that really brings us back to that mind muscle connection. You don't always need the pump and you don't always need the soreness, but having those things and then being able to connect to the muscle is a really good indication that you're probably doing the exercises that work best for you and your form is in a really great place. If you're getting zero of those things, you might wanna switch out one of the exercises you originally put into your program, take it out and then put something else in and try that and see how that goes for a few weeks. I think one of the most important things for you to do as a beginner is to try new things and work on perfecting your form. Again, I included a freebie four week program in the link below in the description of this video. If you guys are still feeling slightly confused or you just want a little bit of help to set you off on the right foot on how to use different sets, RPEs, reps, and exercises in your program. You guys can click on that, get a little extra help, and then I think you should be set to create your own program the next time around. Remember, typically a program could be around four to eight weeks, and it usually gets progressively harder as the weeks go on. You can make it harder by messing with your RPEs, your sets, and your reps, as well as your weight. There are many ways to progress an exercise, and I probably will be putting out a video on that in the future. If you guys have any questions or you just wanna show some love, please leave a comment below, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and I love you guys.